Hey everyone, I hope that you're all having a lovely day. I've been thinking a little series or just video thing that I want to start doing on here is top five movies in certain categories. So like top five comedies, top five horror movies, top five rom-coms, top five Pixar movies, you know, etc., etc. Just because I can talk about movies all day long and I love watching people talk about movies. So, so yeah, hopefully you enjoy. Um, I wanted to start off today with my top five Marvel movies. Even if you're not into Marvel, the movies that I'm gonna share, I think you can watch solo. Yeah, it helps to know the backstory and like to know the characters, but these movies I really genuinely think anyone can watch. They have a special place in my heart and I think that you'll like them too. And if you are into Marvel, please leave me a comment of your top five favorite Marvel movies. I would love to know and let me know why they're your favorites. There's not really any particular order. I tried putting these in order, but that's really hard for me. So I'm just gonna list my top five, but there's not really an order. Starting off with Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, I was a little skeptical when I found out Marvel was taking on Spider-Man, like back in the day, and that, you know, I grew up with Tobey Maguire. Obviously looking back at those movies now, they were like horrendous, but I grew up loving those movies. And then um, I, I never saw the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies in theaters because I was so just not into that. Still have not seen any of those. So when I found out Marvel was taking on Spider-Man and Peter Parker, I thought, okay, this can either be really good or really bad. I really enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming, the first one. I thought they did a really good job at conveying the characters. They obviously picked a really good Peter Parker. It's finally not just some 30 year old trying to act like a teenager. Tom Holland was made for that role. I believe that Stan Lee actually said that he felt that Tom Holland was made for that role, so that's pretty special. The reason I have Spider-Man Far From Home, which is the second Spider-Man movie, on my list of top five is because the plot is so good. I think it's one of Marvel's most engaging plots. I don't think there's any slow spots in the whole movie. The plot twist in it is chef kiss i think mysterio is one of the coolest marvel characters i love him the effects are just insanely great it's really funny i love that martin Starr is in it as one of the teachers he's so funny i saw it twice in theaters and i've seen it a few times since then so i had to include that in my top five if you haven't seen any marvel movies and you're not planning on watching them in order which of course i recommend but i don't know who has the time for that and if you're not into it i get it I do think you should watch Spider-Man Far From Home. It gives me those vibes of like, I grew up on those early 2000s teen movies like Euro Trip and American Pie and not that the Spider-Man movie is like raunchy or anything, but it gives you those vibes of it's just a teenage movie. Like it's just a fun teen movie. There just happens to be weird shit going on in it, if that makes sense. The next one I'm gonna talk about is Iron Man 3. I, well, I first ever got into Marvel because of Avengers 1. I think I was like in eighth grade. And right after I saw Avengers 1, I know that's not the movie I'm talking about, but I just want to throw this in there. Right after I saw Avengers 1, I walked with my friends to CVS, like from the movie theater to like our local CVS store, and I bought a giant Avengers poster. And I had that thing hanging up in my room from eighth grade year all the way through high school, and I really wish I still had it. But anyway, we're talking about Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 was the movie that actually really got me into Marvel. Like I would see all the movies before that, but once I saw Iron Man 3, something clicked in my head where I was just like massive fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I saw that in theaters a few times. The whole villain story I really like, the little plot twist, if you've seen it, you know what I mean. If you haven't seen it again, I think anybody can watch it. I don't know, I don't really have much to say. I just, I, for some reason I really love that movie and I think most of that is just due to it really being the movie that got me into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I think that the ending is super cute. I don't know. Then we have Captain Marvel. Now I know that Captain Marvel is very much either you love it or you hate it. And I have to say, when I first found out years ago that Brie Larson was getting cast as Captain Marvel, for some reason I had this underlying like hatred for her, which it's the worst opinion I've ever had in my life. I don't know why I didn't like her. I knew her from 22 Jump Street and she was in some Kong movie I saw a few years prior. I don't know, I just had this misconception of her. I was also giving Marvel the benefit of the doubt because 
I think they've always done a great job with casting, so I figured she must be good. The first scene I saw of Captain Marvel, I fell in love with her. Like, there's no one else who could play Captain Marvel like Brie Larson did. I don't even think I would love Captain Marvel the way that I do if it weren't for Brie Larson. She did an amazing job. I saw that also a couple times while it was in theaters. What I love about it is it definitely shows women and like little girls who are watching it that you can be a superhero. You don't have to be a man to be some badass superhero, but it's not like in your face where it feels fake. I thought Captain Marvel did a really good job at just, she's a woman and she's saving the world. It doesn't really have anything to do with her gender. It just is what it is because she was badass before she was Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers was a pilot, a really good pilot. I just think her whole character development was really interesting. I think that that movie is really funny. I really like the humor in it. She's a bit sarcastic and I don't know. I just, I really love that movie. I could honestly babble on and on and on. I love that scene towards the end where she's fighting and the song I'm Just a Girl by Gwen Stefani or No Doubt is in the background. I just, mm. I vibe every time. I don't want to give much away. Again, if you haven't seen any Marvel movies, you could definitely watch Captain Marvel and you could definitely enjoy it. Um, it takes place technically before any of the other Marvel movies, so you really don't need to know anything prior. And I'm really sad that some people who are big fans of MCU do not like Captain Marvel. I don't want to say it's the men, but it really is the men. <laughs> Like, it just makes me sad. I follow Brie Larson on all my social medias and I see some of the hate she gets and it really just hurts me to my core because I feel like she's done so much for setting an example for women and I just feel like we needed a character like her in the MCU, so I'm really happy she's there. I heard that she was supposed to be a bigger part in Endgame, but they cut all of that because people weren't receiving her character well and that really, really makes me sad because I think she could have been really, really cool in that movie. And I was kind of looking forward to seeing her. She wasn't in it that much, but that's a whole other story. I could talk about that. <laughs> I was debating heavily if it was Guardians 1 or Guardians 2 for me in my top five. And I went with Guardians 2 because the theme of the movie is very different for a Marvel movie. It's very much about family. It's very personal to Peter Quill. It's very emotional, like not sad emotional, just emotional. You feel so connected to all of the characters. I think Drax is hilarious in that movie. He's one of my favorite characters from the Guardians stories. But um, I think all of the characters grow a lot in that movie. Yondu, the whole part with him, if you know, you know. His character arc is beautiful. There's some one-liners in that movie that just get me every time. They're so funny. Again, the effects are incredible. I think that of all the movies, the Guardians of the Galaxy effects like make my soul the happiest just because I love all the cosmic colors. And, and obviously, I don't even think I need to mention this, but the soundtrack is amazing. The first Guardians movie is kind of, I feel like, what introduced these amazing soundtracks into the MCU. And I always love that about the Marvel movies. I love when they include bomb music. I do feel that the plot and the theme of that movie have helped a lot of people who dealt with certain aspects that are kind of talked about in the movie. Obviously, the movie is a very exaggerated version of daddy issues, but it's just really cool to me that they portray those types of emotions in these people that are supposed to be like superhumans or superheroes. So I like the emotion of that movie. Okay, so for the last one that I'm gonna talk about, I could not pick between Endgame and Infinity War, so I have to tie them together, which I know technically that's breaking the rules because that's six movies, but I'm tying them together because I think each of them obviously could not stand without the other. I like Infinity War for how action-packed it is. I think that that movie start to finish is a work of art. I remember seeing it and thinking nothing could top that movie. And then Endgame came around and I was floored at how good that movie was. Thanos is my boy. He is my all-time favorite Marvel character, or at least up there in my top three favorites. So I love that he's such a main character in Infinity War. I like that he's the villain, the bad guy, but you also empathize with him. That's the first movie I've seen where a character that you're really supposed to hate, you don't really hate. They show his emotion towards his goal, regardless of if you agree with him or not. You almost wanna see him succeed, unless that's just me. Obviously, you always wanna see the Avengers win, but for me, I also just was so surprised that they were able to write a bad guy that way, where you totally understand his side of the story and you like get where he's coming from. I think that the fight scene in Infinity War is really cool. Obviously, it does not top the end game fight scene. The portal scene in Endgame. You know what I'm talking about. I don't wanna give anything away, but if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I lose my mind every time I see it. I think that 
that part of the movie kind of makes up for any slow parts of the movie towards the middle. I love the plot, I would never change anything about it, but it's very deep, it's very intense, it's sad. There's a few really sad moments. It's definitely a movie where you're like on the edge of your seat a lot, but it's really, really good. Captain America just is such a badass in that movie. And then the ending with him and Peggy, like, if you haven't seen Marvel, you just, you need to watch all the Captain America movies and then Endgame just so you can understand the meaning behind the scene of him and Peggy dancing at the end. When I saw it in theaters for the first time, I was weeping. There's that scene in the fight scene where all the women um, join together for a split second. I don't want to give much away, but I know that that scene gets a lot of hate. And again, I, I think that it was a really subtle way of making any women or girls watching it feel this sense of power. So I don't see anything wrong with it. I love that scene. Again, I didn't feel like it was in your face, like women power. It was very subtle. It was really cool. I'm really happy they included that scene. And then I have to give an honorable mention to Avengers 1, just because like I said, that was the movie that kind of started it all for me. It's cool to see how different the MCU has changed from Avengers 1 to Endgame, just to think about character development and all the twists and turns that the studio has made too. Also I'm giving an honorable mention to Captain America the First Avenger because I think that movie is really important to the MCU. Again, I think anybody can watch it. I think people sometimes forget where Steve Rogers is coming from and where he started. He's always been this really humble little man. He just happened to become a big man. <laughs> I have like a soft spot in my heart for that movie. It's really hard for me to pick just a few movies out of the whole entire MCU. I love all of them except for Hulk. I think that the Hulk movie was a bust, but I think we all think that collectively. So I know a lot of you probably aren't into Marvel. I've had a few people tell me that they are and that they want me to talk about it more. So I figured this is my platform. I might as well just go for it, but I really do want to make more of these, but just with different types of movies. Let me know if you have any categories in mind you'd like me to talk about. I'm really excited to do a top five horror movies closer to October because I love horror movies. I might even do like a top five like 80s horror movies just on its own because I just, something about those 80s horror movies with the practical effects, they're so cheesy. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you've subscribed, thank you so, so much. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. I'm happy that you stopped by and I hope you stick around.